even odd neither for each each one here. What do you say? Um, I think one is neither. Okay, I agree. Um, it's not necessarily one of each either. I just yeah. grabbed. I just grabbed a random problems. Two. Uh, I think two is even as well. Or I think two is even. Yep. I agree. And then I think three is even. Okay. I agree. All right. A couple more here to look at. All right. So same thing here. Even, odd, neither. What do you say? Um, I think number four is... Uh, odd. Okay, I agree. Um, number five. Uh, neither. Okay, so why is it not even? Um, because it like it doesn't have a, a like an opposite like it doesn't have a, like a parabola thing so so it's not the same on the left and the right yeah. of the of that right yeah okay but in terms of not odd it does go through the origin which is kind of critical for odd and the question is if you rotated this would it oh, look it would exactly... be the same yeah yeah so, so this one actually odd. this one actually is odd yeah okay number six looks like it's neither though I agree. Okay, so the next style of question you might see is to verify algebraically. Let me actually grab the instructions. Directions. Not sure why they're directions. Okay. So you might get a problem like this that says to determine uh, whether the um, function is even, odd, or neither. Okay. Do you, do you remember how to do that? How to start something like this? Um. So you make it negative x. You find g of negative x, which means to put negative x in for x wherever you see an x in parentheses is preferred. I think this one is even. Okay. Now, what is it? What is the result when you simplify this? Because that's really what matters here x to the fourth minus uh, 2x. Square. Anything else? Yes. Now, is this the same as the original? Yes. Yes, it's even. Okay. All right. How about this next one? Same thing, even, odd, or neither, algebraically, though. It automatically can't be even. Why is that? Um, because when you plug in negative x for x cubed, you'll get negative 7x. Okay. That's true. I agree. Um. So then when you factor out negative one, negative one times seven X cubed. So I think it's odd. Okay. How sure are you of your answer? Uh, pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you should be. I, I'm just asking because I'm not sure. I can't obviously see what you're doing. So yeah, it's it's negative 7x cubed plus x, and this is not the same as the original, okay? Yep. But now you factor out a negative one from both. Is this the same as the original? Yes. And that's what makes it odd. Okay. All right, um, 
Any questions on even, odd, neither? Nope. Okay. Now I, we don't. I, I'm only I just. I'm pulling up various questions, so don't don't. Uh, I, these some of these are kind of multiple choice, but um, just to give you some different looking questions here. So let me. Uh, I just got to snip in this a little bit differently. Ah, that didn't come in right. Okay, there it is. All right. So the question here is. Actually, let me do it uh, differently here. Um, I want you to write the axis of symmetry okay. for, for each one, or you can tell me verbally. So for number one, x equals one. Okay. For number two, x equals negative one. Good. For number three, x equals negative one. For number four, x equals two. Good. Okay. So now let me, let me grab one of these. I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to grab this one here. Okay. And, and the question, based on what I saw yesterday, it would read something like, how does this graph compare to Y equals X squared? Okay. So uh, it's a uh, so it's a translation to the left one. Okay. Um, the reflection over the x-axis and uh, it's up three. Okay. Now this one's this one's actually got it's got one other thing here, and I don't I don't know if you would even get this. The normally normally the points go from the first from the vertex they go uh, one one away in each direction. Do you know what I mean by that, or is that not clear? Oh, like uh, on the graph, like it, they'd go one yeah, to the left yeah, or right. Yeah, there's kind of this this pattern. Yeah. This one has a a stretch to it. Now I don't know if you would be expected to pick that up. Because you really can't pick it up unless it gives you the equation. Yes, that would be, it'd be pretty tough. But this one, yeah, this one has uh, has a bit more uh, to it. So, okay. Um, here's kind of an interesting question. Um, You look at this. This is so it have to be in either one or three because it's a positive what what's positive oh wait that doesn't mean anything yeah so, you, so here's what this is really asking you to do determine the vertex yeah so you have so, to use formulas um negative b so negative eight over two that's right uh so it'd be four so then it'd have to be in either quadrant one or quadrant four Quadrant so, one or quadrant four. So I would I would find the y value of the vertex as well. Um, and I, I what I'm concerned about I, I don't know if you're writing anything down. I you've got a sign error in what you just said. Oh yeah, it's negative four. Okay. So then sixteen minus thirty two is negative sixteen plus ten is negative six. So it's in quadrant four. So I'm going to snip the graph in and you tell me if this is what you expected to see. Oh, wait, because it's a negative four. Yes. It should be in quadrant three. Yes. OK. 
Okay. So, uh, you know, again, uh, minus B over 2A, really yeah. you got to know the formula there, uh, which is minus 8 over 2 times 1, negative 4, and then you get the Y value. Yep. Okay. Um, here is one we did last night. I'm not going to give you the multiple choice, even though this one's multiple choice. Um, and I have to add just one word here. Raise his vertex. I want you to write the equation in vertex form. Okay. Form the, for this one, please. Y equals A, X minus H squared plus K. Y equals A, um, four minus three squared. Plus six, four equals a times one squared plus six, is negative two equals a, y equals negative two, x minus three squared plus six. So I got y equals negative two at times x minus three squared plus six. Uh, that, that is one of the options. So I think that sounds pretty reasonable. I think I heard this. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So the, uh, way I will test this is check the other point. Does four equal four minus three is one, one squared is one minus two times one is minus two plus six is four. So yes, this does in fact work. Okay. Now let me give you something a little bit harder. Let's say the uh, graph of, uh, I'm sure the function was given as 6x times 3x minus 2. And I asked you, what is the vertex? How would you handle something like this? Um, um. So it'd be a plus zero at the end, but there's a six X in front of there. Um, Is this in any kind of form that you're used to seeing? Factored form? Kind of in factored form, yeah. Um, is factored form used to find the vertex? No. Kind of, it could kind of be. Um, it's a little bit harder to do, but it could be. And you might think, well, what does he mean by that? Um, well, the vertex is always midway between the two intercepts. Okay. Yeah, oh, so what I plug in, uh, zero for Y and zero for X. What, what I'm suggesting is that, is that you could set each of these equal to zero. Oh, okay. Okay. And so fine. It would be zero and two thirds. Two thirds. And you, and the, the, that's like saying there's zero and there's two thirds. So the vertex is midway between there. One third. One third. Now that's option one. Option two, and what I would prefer you to do is to multiply 18x squared minus 12x. This is now in standard form and it gives you a chance to um, you maybe use formulas or something okay. like that. All right. Okay. So let's carry this through though. Either way, we've got one coordinate of the vertex, which is one third. I want the other coordinate. And you're allowed to grab it, use a calculator if you need. Okay. This. Get it out. Okay. Okay, so six times 0 0.33. So you gotta be careful if you're using decimal oh. approximations it may not you may not get so. an answer that's exact which is what i'm looking for so then i'll do six times one divided by three yes then uh parentheses uh three uh divided by one three Six times one by three is 
two times three, one divided by three. Okay. So I got zero, one third and zero. Okay. Um, how did you get that? Did you, and and I, this was, I was wondering if you might use the, did you use the first form or the second form? I used the first form. So I plugged in uh, okay. one so third. So six, then one, six times yeah. one third is two. Yep. Three times one third is one. I'm yep. sorry, is one minus two. Oh, I didn't do the right uh, order of operations. So then yeah. it would be negative two. Yes, be negative two. Good. Okay, let's look at a new problem here. Let's say y equals x squared plus 11x plus 28. Part A is uh, the y-intercept. And part B is the x-intercept. So go ahead and think about how you might do that. Okay, so y-intercept yeah. is... Um, we'll I have to solve for the x intercept first. It'd be a negative 11 over 2. That's the vertex. Oh, oh, so then I just would I just plug in a 0 for x and 0 for y? For the y intercept, x is 0. Yep, and for the x intercept, y equals 0. That's right. So go ahead and give me those, uh, those, those values. So then for the y-intercept, so then x equals zero. So then zero plus zero. So then x, so the y-intercept is 28. Okay. And the x-intercept, so then zero equals negative 28. So negative 28 equals x squared plus 11x. So I, I hear I hear some things I don't like. Um, when you set when you set it equal to zero, this should this should say, "Oh, I already know how to do this. I did this last last chapter." Oh, factored form. Yes. Uh, so it's four. So x minus four times x plus seven. Okay. So I want the x intercepts though. I'm not. I mean, the factored form helps, but it's not enough. Yeah. So I have to stop. So then, x minus four, and then x. Um, uh, x plus four times x plus seven. Yes. And then, so then the y-intercepts would be... Uh, x-intercepts, x-intercepts. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, so then be negative four, negative seven. Very good. All right, so here's a, here's a new problem for you to think about. y equals 36x squared plus four. Question A is, what is the domain? I'm sorry, what is the range? Let's do the range. What is the range? Um, so then it's, that's like a perfect square or a, I think, right? It's a, so it's, so try to think about what leads to the range. What what would you like to know to be able I to figure to know out the that? vertex? Yes. The range. So how do you get the vertex from this form? Um, would I take the square root of both of them? So it would be like difference nope. of squares. Nope. You don't do any factoring. It's in standard form. Ax squared plus bx plus c. Oh. So that means there's no middle term. That's right. But you still can find the vertex. So it's negative zero over that's right uh, 36, which means x equals zero. Well, it's 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 two times 36, but it but is the zero. answer is still zero. It's still yeah. zero, yes. Okay, but that that's not that's like part piece one of the vertex. Yep. So then uh why so then you'd get uh, you get zero four for your vertex. That's right. But and that, you, that leads you to the range. Yeah, but you have to know like which way it opens up. 
Okay. Would so it open what? um down because it's because no, it would open up because right. it's negative. That's or because right. it's positive. Yes. Um so then y is greater than or equal to four. That's right. Very good. Okay. So all the questions I'm giving you tonight are are uh like that there's something that leads to it. I, I'm not just gonna give you the like them straight uh, direct questions. Cause I mean, that, that doesn't help you at this point. You know how to do those really well. Um, next question I'll ask here is um, um, what is the min or max? The max is X or Y equals four. Okay, so again, or, of, so just think, four. Well, think about it. does it open up or down? It opens, oh, the min is four. Yes. It opens up. Min is four. Good. Okay. All right. Let's say I give you a new function here. I say y equals 4x squared plus 10x minus 24. And this time I want to know the question will ask um, where does the graph cross the x axis? So where's the x intercept? Yes, exactly. Uh, so then y equals zero. So then 4x squared. So then um, I can factor out two. So then, okay. oh, wait, no, I don't have to because it's. I would factor out two. Oh, well, yeah. So then it'd be 2x squared. Zero equals 2x squared plus 5x minus Twelve, but I don't need the two anymore because it's not part of the okay. equation. That's fine. So then plus twelve. And then you get uh, twelve equals two x squared plus five x. Oh, I forgot to factor. You have to factor this. Yep. Zero equals two minus twelve. So then adds up to five, multiplies to negative. So this was the one where you have to take the two times the negative twelve. This one's a little bit harder than the other. Yes, yeah, so it's ones. negative twenty-four, but it has to add to five. Um, so three and eight, some variation on that. Oh yeah, um, negative three and eight. So then, um, so it'd be two x. <laughs> My wait, yeah, it would be two x. Would it be two x squared? Plus eight x, minus three x, minus twelve. Oh yeah. Now I'm not saying you'll do this, but it's good to just remind yourself in case you get one like this. You factor yeah. out the two x, x plus four, x yeah. plus four. What goes here? What goes in between? Um, so that's uh has to multiply by negative three. That's right. So this becomes x plus four, two x minus three. Yep. Uh, is that is that what we wanted? Is that the answer? No. Okay. So then it would be uh negative four and three halves. Very good. Okay. So let's transition to one of there's a top another topic yesterday that seemed like you struggled with just a tiny bit it was determining whether the table represented a, a linear quadratic or exponential or neither and here is your first table you're welcome to graph it you're also welcome to use differences or another method if you so okay. choose So then that's linear. How do you the differences. know? What is it about the differences that makes it linear? It's minus four every time. That's right. So not, not too difficult to, to see that. Yep. All right. Let's look at number three. It's kind of like the even odd neither. You'll probably get one of each if, if, there's, if they're grouped together, like you showed me on that last quiz I saw. Um, how about this one? Um, 
I feel like this one is um exponential. Okay. What makes it exponential? Why is it not linear? Uh, it's not linear because there's no common difference. Okay, that's true. Why uh, is it why is it not quadratic? If you do the um if you do the opposite, like the negative two minus minus twelve. It's not the same every time. Okay, so so just to be clear, you you're just looking at you actually don't care about the x values in any of these. It's oh. it's tw 12, 12 minus twenty one, minus nine five minus twelve minus seven, zero minus five minus five, and so on here. Oh. Minus three minus zero. Minus four minus a minus three, ends up being uh, negative one. Minus three minus a minus four ends up being positive one. Now you, so that's your first difference. Do you agree that those are not the same? Yes. But the second difference minus well, minus. Uh, no, no. You go. You go with this new row. You look at uh, the minus seven minus a minus nine. It's positive two. Minus five minus minus seven positive two. Do you see that these are going up by two? Also? Yeah. That's and so that because the because the second difference is the same, it is quadratic. Oh, it would be quadratic. Okay. Yes. So now, the uh, x the x um value doesn't matter at all. The, you can ignore it. Here's okay. something else to notice. Do you see the overlap? Yeah. That tells you that it it dipped down. Oh, I thought it so. didn't because um. I thought 21 was going to be the vertex. Not necessarily, right? It, you don't know where it, where it could be. Okay. All right. Um, another one for us to look at. That's multi so that's exponential because that's multiplied by two every time. Yep. Okay. Okay, here is a new problem for us to look at. A uh, word problem here. Yeah, this one's exponential. Okay. These uh, quadratic word problems are kind of morbid. Um, you know, Jason jumped off a cliff into the ocean. That sounds sort of bad. I don't know. Maybe you don't read it that way, but. So in these scenarios, we talked about this yesterday. Um, in this case, he's jumping up and hitting the water, right? And so there's yeah. usually a couple of places. They usually care about the peak or this end point. And when you read the problem, when you they read- They care part, about the peak. Yes. But specifically, they want the X value there, or in this case, the T value. Yep. Okay. So could you find that for us, please? So then if I want to find T, I have to make H zero. Uh, this is the vertex, though. Oh, okay. Vertex. So then so it's two, negative two, 16. Two is, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So it's negative 16 over negative 32 is one half. So x equals one half. Okay. So so your answer here would be t equals one half seconds. Yep. Or half a second. Okay. What do you think part B is going to ask? Um. How long did it take him to hit the water? That's part or C. That's part C. Good, good guess. What was the highest point that Jason reached? So what is uh, that? What is that in this picture? So the Y intercept. The highest point. Because he jumped up. The you vertex, see, yeah. Like when you jump off of something, usually you jump up a little. Yeah. So it's the Y value of the vertex. Yep. So how do you get that from the number you already have and plug it in yes so you're welcome to use a calculator but this is a i mean this is a 
problem you might see on a test or a quiz. So we got to look at it. I got 484 feet. Uh, for, for you said 484? Yeah. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Okay, and then you, you already alluded to it. The next question asks when splash occurs, uh, how long does it take for him to hit the water? And let me snip that in. So then that's, um, that's the X intercepts. That's right. That's over here too. So you're saying the whole equation, I'll write it again for you, minus 16 T squared plus 16 T plus 480 equals yeah. zero. No, yeah. you, you can use your calculator, but you, this has to be done by hand in terms of showing work. What would you do first here? Probably um, factor it because... 16 what? doesn't so factor out negative 16. Good. So it's t squared minus t minus 30 equals zero. So could you factor this from here for us and set it equal to zero? Yeah. So then 30. Uh, so then neg uh, five and minus six. So t minus. 6t plus 5. So then I got uh, 6 seconds because it can't be negative. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Um, let's look at number 2 here. I'd like you to try this one on your own. I think the only one you'll have you might have an issue with is B. Um, so if you want to skip B, for you can for now. But um, A, A, C, and D are questions like we just did. So um, let me know your answers, and um, if you have yeah. questions, please ask. But give this a try, please. If it's launched vertically upward. How long will it take for the rocket to return to the ground? So then that's it's asking for seconds. So then that's an X intercept. So I have to find the X intercepts first, I think, for A. Uh, yes, that's exactly so, right. So then. Um, Factor out to 16, go into 128. It does. Yeah. So then negative 16 T. And it'd be T plus 8 or T minus 8. So then uh, A equals, so then A, the answer is 8. So eight give, seconds. It, give it units, yeah, T equals eight seconds. That would be good. I agree. Um, so then for B, would I plug in uh, 122 for uh, H? Yes. So you're setting 112 equals yeah. minus 16T squared plus 128T. So then and I take the square root first. No, you, can't, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. Um, because you have an isolated T squared. What you can do is move the 112 to the other side of the equation. Oh, okay. And then you can factor out a minus 16. Okay. So then it'd be T squared minus, uh, minus 8T. Um, plus 7. So it'd be minus seven. So T minus seven, T minus one. Okay. So then you'd get T equals seven and T equals one. Are they both correct? Um, if you haven't done it, draw a picture. Rocket goes up, rocket comes down. 
So then you'd probably have to graph it first to figure out how, which one is more accurate. Well, remember, it comes back down at eight, starts at zero. So you have one and seven. Yeah. Have you flown on an airplane? Yeah. It's a, just it's a serious question. So when you fly on an airplane, do you go do you go a thousand feet up in the air? Yeah. More? And then when you come back down, do you also go a thousand feet in the air? Oh, so then both of them are correct. Yes. Oh, because if it reaches one twelve, it has to be one twelve again when it's coming back down. It has. It has to be. You have to hit it twice. There's no way to get to the ground without going through it again if you reach it. Good. Good. Some good thinking there on that. There's a question like this that they ask in physics, which is like basically asking how, how a police officer knows if you've been speeding while driving. And uh, it's because you had to hit the speed on the way up and the way down that you were going. But uh, go ahead and try uh, C. If you have questions, you know, please ask. C, C and D are referring back to the original equation again. Okay. Um, and the vertex at negative 128 over 32 over negative 32 is 4. So then x equals 4, t equals 4. That would be 4. And then negative 16 times 4 squared plus 128 times or it's 256. That is that is the uh, what is 256? The maximum height. So uh, so C. So the answer to C is 256. If you wrote this, you would get marked wrong. Can you tell me why? Oh, 260 feet. Uh, 256 feet. Yes, units units matter all of a sudden. How about part C? Kind of already alluded to it, but what is yep. the answer? Part C. Um. Four seconds. Yes. Okay. Um, here's another problem that uh, I think is kind of interesting for us to, to work on here. It says, write an equation with the given roots. So roots means x-intercepts. Okay. They're saying it's minus five and minus one. It wants it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Any idea how to start this? So the given roots. Yes. So then the x intercept. So would you have to like work it backwards? Yes. Um. So negative something. So negative something over two something has to equal negative five well it's less complicated than that let me go back and show you what you because you've already done this a bunch of times um here we'll do it right here and eh, that's not a good example let's do it sorry i'm trying to find what we already did okay if minus four and minus seven were the x-intercepts what did they come from uh factoring but how, but how like how did how did you go to the one on the left how did you go from x plus four to minus four and x plus seven to minus seven? Uh, the zeros. So how, how might you go backwards? The reverse of the zeros? Yes. So oh, me... so then negative five and negative one are zeros. Oh, so then it'd be five and one. So x equals minus five corresponds to x plus five. Yeah, so then x plus one. Okay. So this is in factored form. What what do they want? They want it in standard form. So what do you need to do to put that in standard form? Boil it out. Okay. Can you do that for us, please? And x squared plus 6x plus 5. Good. Any questions on that? Um, no. Actually. Okay. All right. Here's a, just another problem I found. I don't know, we're just doing a mishmash of everything. 
identify the vertex and the y-intercept. So then the vertex is negative two, negative two. So that rules out everything except for B. That's a bad question. Okay. I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have allowed, done that. Okay. Oh, all right. Let me ask the same question here, but with a different function. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't realize the answers were so bad. Uh, for 21 here, what is the y-intercept? Um, negative, or just five. Five is the y-coordinate of the vertex. It's not the y-intercept. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then set x equal to zero. So then negative three, negative three squared is nine, nine plus five, so 14. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so let me have you try this one here. I'll make this graph as large as reasonable here. So it says use vertex form to write the equation of the parabola. Okay, um, so then the vertex is negative or two, negative three. Okay, very good. Then, um, and then I just need one other point. So then, um, so I'll, I'll suggest this one. Yeah, that one. I was going to be use good. That one. Uh, you don't want to get into the habit of like trying to guess a point up here. Yeah, or, also... or use zeros. Yeah. Yes. So then one zero. So then um zero equals a one minus two squared minus three. That's negative one, negative one. So zero equals negative one or just one a or a. Let me, know when you, yeah, let me know when you get your final answer. Okay. So I got y equals um y equals three or y equals negative three uh x squared or y equals negative three parentheses x minus two squared minus three. Okay, there's, there's a major problem that you have here. The, what you've given me, the graph would look like this because of that negative in front. Would it be a positive three? Possibly. Now, my question to you is, is where do you think you went wrong with with the, uh, you know, your signs there? I know it's late. I'm sure you're tired. Um, but let's look at this together. So it's zero equals a one minus two squared minus three. Add three to both sides. What is one minus two squared? Um, negative one. Oh, uh, I see where I went wrong. Yeah, it should be three. So y yes. equals three x minus two squared minus three. Good, really good. Okay. Uh, let me pull up one more of these. Here we go. Uh, this is one of those table problems again, uh, linear, quadratic, or exponential. Okay. Uh, plus five, plus three. So it's not linear. Oh, it's quadratic because there's two eights. That's right. Now that that's that works most of the time, you know, math is full of exceptions. Um, I could give you a problem where there is no repetition and it is still quadratic. All that means is is most of the time that they're giving you something where it comes back up, but it's possible. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you does your teacher seem like the deceptive type or challenge question type? Um, no. Okay, so you this will probably work. So you can go go with that. Okay. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else on this that I have not asked for. 
Um, well, let's do one more transformation here. Let's say, let's say y equals negative one half x plus two squared minus one. Give me the transformations of this one, please. So it moves to the left two. Okay. Uh, reflection over x-axis. Oh wait, no, a vertical shrink by factor of one half. Okay. And then down one. Good. Very good. Um, I don't know how you feel. How do you feel in going into the, uh, based on this review? Pretty good. Yeah, I would say you're you're in pretty good shape. Um, do you do anything the day of the test to review or what's your, what do you, what's your plan going in there tomorrow? Yeah, I usually,